All right, we're going to be creating a video for palpation of the erectors. So we're going to be basically starting in and around the sacrum and working our way up through all three segments of this. Um, but to start, we're going to be looking at iliocostalis. So obviously we have our person in prone. We're going to be starting with iliocostalis lumborum. I've already kind of talked consent with my partner today, and we're going to be palpating over top of his sacrum. So, but I'm starting on the posterior iliac crest, working my way towards that PSIS, and then I'm going to round the corner and start going down the lateral side of the sacrum. So iliocostalis lumborum has origins down the center here on the median sacral crest, as also on the side here on that lateral sacral crest and even to the intermediate. While we're here, I'm just going to have my person lift up their shoulders. Good. So we're starting to see the erectors starting to stick up in this area and we can go back down. So this is the start of our origin. Now, depending on which reference text, uh, the thoracolumbar fascia connects to a lot of the structure into here. So some references will include iliocostalis and longissimus, basically almost blended together as it goes up and attaches to the spinous processes of your lumbar vertebrae and even just into the beginning of the thoracic up to around T11. Um, for other sources, it just basically includes sacrum and iliac crest. So again, depending on which source you're using, just be aware of that as their origin. Now, since this muscle is the most lateral of the three erectors, Again, as we have our individual lift up his shoulders off the table, here's the width of the erector group. I'm going to be staying to the outer side, the most lateral, and you can come back down to try to palpate where is iliocostalis. So longissimus and iliocostalis are going to be really blended in here, and even deeper is going to be multifidus. So this is going to be a little bit tricky to identify by itself. But if you stick to the most lateral fibers of your erectors, as you count your way up, that is the area in which iliocostalis is located. Now I've come across our first rib here at the bottom, so that is going to be rib 12. So iliocostalis lumborum is going to be attaching to the lower half of the ribs. So since there are 12 ribs, we're going to be talking about 7 through 12 in this video. And its insertion is really close to what's called the rib angle. So this is basically the most posterior part of the rib that you can feel as it comes from the T-spine, it heads posterior and lateral angles, and then starts heading more anterior and lateral. So you can quite easily feel on people this sharper border of the rib right in this area. Those are the rib angles. So as we count up, 12 really doesn't have an angle, but we're just gonna contact in a similar area. Here's rib 12. I'm gonna go up, here's rib number 11, 10, 9, 8, and rib number 7. So really close, again, like I said, just medial from those rib angles right in this area is our attachment on these ribs. Now to get to this portion of it to fire, the iliocostalis has three functions, but we're going to tie the one that is pretty specific. Again, we've been using it already. If he lifts his head up, good. This is extension. Now the erector group is also responsible for a ipsilateral rotation. So if he starts to turn towards the side I'm palpating on like he's done, that is going to bring these rib attachments down and on an angle towards our origins. So again, it's a little bit more of a specific palp for trying to identify the erectors versus some of the other paraspinal and back muscles. So that is the first section of this muscle. Um, again, depending on your source, besides those three actions, extension of the trunk, lateral flexion of the trunk, and a ipsilateral rotation of the trunk. Good, he's done all three of them for us. This muscle can also pull inferiorly on these ribs. And so in some cases, it's considered a respiratory assist muscle or secondary respiratory muscle as it starts to depress down the ribs in some forced inhalation. We're going to focus with that extension component and, like I said, the rotation. So that's the first section of our muscle. And the next thing that we're going to be moving on to is now part two. So where this muscle finishes in its origins, in reality around in here, 
it's going to start the next section of origins. This is in a slightly different location from the insertion of the last section, but iliocostalis thoracis is going to be starting on those same ribs where it inserted just slightly more medial. So the, or the insertion was out here, the origin is going to be a little bit more medial. So I'm going to recount those same ribs, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, and 7. These being the origin this time, and the muscles going superior and slightly more lateral to the upper half of the ribs. And that obviously is going to be then 1 through 6. So if you made the error like I just did and took my hands off, then you're going to recount it again just to make sure you're on the right rib segments. Or you can go from the T-spine and work yourself over as long as you're comfortable with where the spinous process sits in line with the TVP and there the rib. Or you could technically start from the top, finding T1 spinous process and counting down your ribs. I'm going to go back to the bottom here just to be in the area again that's correct. So 12, 11, 10 nine, eight, and seven, and then it's going to start to insert on six, five, four, three, and two is going to be quite deep in there, and for the most part you are unable to feel rib one from a posterior view. You have to go in from the superior aspect of it, so it's really going to be challenging for me to say I'm feeling rib one from this area. So these muscles are again going superior and lateral, working their way up all along these ribs. And therefore, as they're going lateral, they're able to pull and do this ipsilateral rotation. So as he's able to, and it's not just lifting up the shoulder, it really is about extending and rotating the spine through that segment. So iliocostalis thoracis is doing extension, lateral flexion, and ipsy rotation of the spine through the thoracic cage area. Okay, so again, your palpation near those rib angles all along the spine, and as you get up near that scapula, please make sure you're medial to the scapula, not pushing over top. It's going to get a little denser here as you start palpating through trapezius, as well as the rhomboid, and even serratus posterior, your superior. So it's going to get a little bit trickier to feel this segment of muscle. Okay, we're going to go into our third and final section of iliocostalis. And the last section is called cervices. Now this muscle is going to be again originating on some ribs, but in the upper T-spine. And this time, instead of more ribs, it's going to be going up into the side of the neck. So our muscle is originating on ribs three through six. So instead of basically counting all the way up like I've been doing, what I'm going to do instead is find the transverse process of T2. So you can find the spinous process of cervical 7 and thoracic 1 and utilize neck rotation to help you identify the 7th spinous process of cervical 7, sorry, because it moves a little bit more. So once I've found thoracic 1 and then thoracic 2, I'm going to move lateral until I feel our first rib. So here's our first rib here, rib number 2 from this posterior. So then I have an origin on rib number 3, rib number 4, rib number five, and rib number six. So in this area, and the insertion is going to be going up into the transverse processes of our cervical vertebrae, and that is four, five, and six. So in this area here, over top of our ribs, and then it's gonna be going up and going a little bit more anterior as it goes into the lateral side of the neck. So from this position, it's a little bit tricky to feel those transverse processes, I'm going to try to do our best to show it on camera here. I'm going to start by finding the mastoid process of the temporal bone as well as the angle of his mandible. So basically what you need to be is anterior to the mastoid process, inferior to the ear, and if you sink in gently, make sure you don't push too hard, this is the approximate location of where the transverse process of cervical one sits. Number two is sitting deep to the sternocleidomastoid, so I'm actually going to be pushing SCM forward and getting underneath to feel transverse process of two, and then below that is going to be three, and then obviously four, five, and six. 
So inserting up here in the transverse process of cervical four, five, and six is gonna be our final insertion. Now services, as it says in its name, is gonna be acting on the neck. So instead of doing extension of the torso, because we have ribs into neck, what he's gonna be doing is he's gonna lift his neck up out of the cradle. He's gonna slightly laterally flex and then look over his shoulder on that side. Perfect, which brings these transverse processes closer to these ribs. So you can go ahead and put your head back down inside there. I'm gonna provide a little bit of resistance just below his ear, which is putting more pressure into the neck versus being on the head. So if you can go ahead and just turn a little bit into my fingers, good, and hold that. And then I can palpate down near those transverse processes. And again, this is gonna be really tricky to isolate it, but you're basically going through the motions and working yourself towards those ribs on that side. Okay, so we palpated all three sections of this muscle in iliocostalis lumborum, iliocostalis thoracis, and iliocostalis cervicis. 